Hi, this is Mark at LearnHowToGarden.com and in today's episode of the 10 Minute Gardener we're going to be harvesting the first of our chilies of the season. If you're not already subscribed to Learn How To Garden, there's a link just below this video. It'll take you over to our website. All it'll cost you is your email address and that means that you get an email every single time we put one of our films up which is sometimes a couple of times a week and it means you get our free newsletter which I think contains some really useful information. The first thing I want to show you is the chilli here on my right or left probably isn't it as it's being filmed. This is my favourite chilli, this is the one that I, if you're only going to grow one grow this, this is ring of fire, it has enough heat that you know you're really eating it, it's really really fruity and it's a really good doer. Uh, this is the one that we've been growing in a 10 litre pot. Now the leaves are starting to look a bit yellow, it probably could have done with a bit more feed near the end but one of the reasons it's not been overfed is to try and promote it to start to turn, to start to sort of ripen its fruit. And as you can see if we come in here closely we've got the beautiful, beautiful ripe red ones, we've got the brown ones that are nearly ripening and still some green ones. But off a single plant there is enough chilli here that using one of the methods that I'm going to show you in a minute about how to preserve it, this will get you through quite a lot of the year, just a single plant. What we will need to do now though is get all the red ones off to give the other ones a chance to ripen. And what you need for this is the most important tool when it comes to chilies, and that's some of these. These are rubber gloves. Now, as someone who's grown chilies for years, you learn this the hard way harvesting your chilies, for prepping your chilies when we put them. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make chilli oil, I'm going to show you how to dry chilies and also how to do chilli flakes. For all of that we're going to use gloves. If you don't you're going to get chilli in your eye, you're going to get chilli on everything. Trust me over the years I have done it all and it all hurts and it all stings and it all makes you want to cry. So the best thing is a pair of gloves if you do get it on your hand, the one thing I have found that does have a significant sort of, if you like, effect of getting it off is orange swarfiga. It's a bit gritty um, and it's quite orangey and three or four applications of that really scrubbed into your hands does seem to get the majority of it off. But it's best not to get it on in the first place. So the first thing, some rubber gloves. So the first thing we want to do is harvest our chilies and literally just take your finger and thumb, press it backwards, comes off with a stalk. And you want to get the stalk off if you can. You can get in quite closely here, it's dead simple. Just literally pick and off it comes. And we're going to harvest all of the ones off this plant and also all of the ones off the plant behind me. If I just get out of shot a second. These are the ones growing in the ground, so they're much darker green but covered in chilies. So I'm going to harvest all the red ones. We'll probably end up with sort of a fairly decent pot of these and then I'm going to take them back to the kitchen and show you, as I've said, how to make chilli oil, how to dry them and then sort of get them down to a really really fine chilli paste and also to do chilli flakes. But I'll just harvest these and show you how many we get off two or three plants. So off three plants we've got a pot full of chilies and this is probably only half of them which is why you need lots of ways to preserve your chilies really so we're going to make with these we're going to do chili oil, chili powder and we're going to do flake chilies. The other things that I tend to do with chilies we make harissa which we'll be putting a recipe up next month on the website we make a rose harissa which is a beautiful North African uh, condiment that you can add to couscous or buckwheat things like that and it's absolutely beautiful and we also do a sweet chilli jam which we'll be showing you how to do that as well. But first things first we're going to take this back to the kitchen and I'll show you how to just quickly prep these uh, to make the three easiest that you can do. I'm back in my conservatory and I think I've said before the reason we do it in here where I've got a glass roof so the light's a bit better and that it's probably half the chilies just off three plants, the other half are still green. So even if you love fresh chilies, you are never ever going to get through all of these before they go off, which is why it's really important that we have lots of ways of preserving them. And the thing with chilies is they preserve beautifully and really, really easily. The first thing you could do if you wanted no effort whatsoever is literally to take your chilies, 
get a piece of cotton and literally on a needle and thread through the actual stalks and make like a little hanging sort of raster of chilies and then you'll have to dry that and the best place to dry it really is an old-fashioned airing cupboard if you've got one or above a radiator what you don't want to do is put them in the oven that will cook them we don't want to cook them we want to dry them we don't want to cook them we just want to remove the moisture from them so that's the first way i don't do that i live in a sort of very old cottage and it's quite damp but it just doesn't work for me so what I find is that the best way for me is to actually use a food dryer. Now, those of you who are subscribed to Learn How to Garden have already seen me using this uh, because we use, use it to dry our tomatoes. We sort of uh, make semi-dried tomatoes in a food dryer. And basically, it's a selection of racks, see-through racks like this, tiny little air blower that goes on top. Uh, and I'll show you how I prep these chilies to go into the food rack. So if we can come right, right in on here, take the chilli off at the top and using a sharp knife, literally split it in two. And what you're left with are all the seeds in the chilies. Now, there's a lot of heat in these seeds and some flavour, not as much flavour as the actual chilli itself, but there's some. But these little pieces, these intermittent shoulders, of the chili here is where the huge amounts of the heat the majority of the heat is in those shoulders so the first thing we do is very carefully get rid of all of those seeds because what we want is the real rich fruitiness of the chili and when the chili is like that we literally are just going to sort of pop these like sardines round our rack but what's ever so important is that we do don't get rid of the seeds and the intermittent ribs. Because a lot of the heat and some flavour is in those, we're actually going to use the seeds to make our chilli oil. So we're making use of all of it at once. So again, I'll just show you very quickly. Take the top off, split it end to end. Take those seeds and shoulders out, but we're going to keep those for our chilli oil. So when you've got your seeds, like I say, just literally take your seeds and into a fairly wide mouthed jar this is just an old mayonnaise jar and the reason for that is that when you come to use the oil uh, with some people strain it off I tend to leave it in here and just use it a spoon at a time if you want to be slightly more prudent you could leave the shoulders out and just use the seeds, and it won't quite be as warm and like I say this is ring of fire this is the one that we tend to use more than anything else um, if you were doing it on a scale of 1 to 10 for heat, this would come out at about 5. Most you buy in the shops would be 1. This little beauty sitting here, this is a Naga chilli. This would be about 11 out of 10. Um, I'm not going to show you what to do with these now. These are really frighteningly strong. Um, this is a treat for my son, who's 22 and a chef. And... Uh, We've got a few nagas growing. I grow these and I grow very strong habaneros. But I wouldn't advise you did this with those unless you're a real, real chilli head. So I'm just going to deal with these and show you what they look like when I've got all of them ready to dry. And once you've chopped them, you just sort of leave them in layers like this. If you're going to use your airing cupboard, again, if you put them on greaseproof paper chopped in half like this without the seeds in the airing cupboard and you're probably going to leave them for four or five days they really do need to get quite dry um, especially if we're going to make chilli powder the drier it is the better it'll be we've taken all the seeds and they're in here so all we now need to do to add to those seeds is half a dozen chilies that we literally just slice so they're split in two and drop in this gives us 
the flavour of the Ring of Fire chillies gives us the fruitiness. Also lets us remember which they are. I make four or five different chilli oils. The oil we tend to use mainly on pizzas, if I'm brutally honest. Um, we've got some that's a couple of years old and is still absolutely fine. The dried chilli we use a lot in our tomato sauces, in puttanesca, in our rabiata. Um, and the flaked chilli tends to get popped on top of things. Half a dozen chilies. Chili seeds from probably four or five dozen, and then literally just top that up with olive oil. The oil is probably going to take four to six weeks before it gets really, really nice and fiery. Just leave it alone, don't do anything to it whatsoever. After four to six weeks, you can decant it off into a nice bottle with a little pouring top, or you can just literally leave it in the one it's in. Uh, we've got some that we've just left as it is now for two years. The one thing I would say, if you leave it in this bottle, one, it will get slightly stronger. And two, as you use the oil up, if any of the chilies come out of the oil, then they will sort of start to go off. So probably you're better off straining it into a separate bottle and just literally pop the top on and leave it. We'll now pop the other chilies in the dryer and we'll be back in, like I say, four to five days. And I'll show you the next step in turning that into chilli powder or flake chilies. Three days these have been in the dryer. If we just focus down here, this is the food dryer, if you've not seen one. They're quite simple, it's just a very, very small fan. And these racks literally have a hole in the middle and the air blows down and then comes back out and slowly dehydrates them. Now, these chilies now are really, really brittle. But what you have to remember is that you've taken away the moisture, but all the oil is still concentrated in them. So although they're brittle, they are now just as hot. In fact, probably in some ways, they'll taste warmer than they used to. And there are two ways that I deal with them at this point. The first is we're just going to pop some into this little bowl off the top of a magic mix. And these are the ones we use for chilli flakes. Now chilli flakes, the commonest thing we do is pop a few onto the top of pizzas. So literally you just take some chilies, and these will last quite happily a year, you know. They won't go off. <coughs> so I'll just pop these in, I'll get rid of this drying rack and I'll get the magic mix to show you what I do now. When it's pulsed, so you can see the flakes the size you want. You're going to take the top off. Now, I know this is stupid, but remember that some of this has already created a powder. Don't breathe in, don't rub your eyes. I know, you know, you're thinking, well, he's telling us what we already know. Trust me, I've done this, especially when you're making a powder, and it can get right in your nose, right up your eyes. I wrote a post earlier in the year, and chilies actually are classed as a biological weapon. Uh, sometimes when they're so strong. So I'll just pour these into here. And as you can see, they're flake size. So that's your chili flakes. Dead easy. That's the simple chili flakes. Now, chili powder, the most useful way I think you can deal with your chilies. It'll last, we've had some that last a couple of years dead easy. What you need to make it really simple is one of these little things, just a coffee grinder. You can get them really quite cheaply. Uh, this one has an elliptical top which makes it easier to, to sort of pour. First thing you want to do is load it with your chilies. They actually will grind easier if you just break them in half. But when you're doing this, remember <coughs> the chili oil is getting on your fingers. Therefore, you're going to have to try and get that off and it won't come off with normal soap and water. I've said once before, orange swarfiga is what I've found best over the years. Don't rub anywhere near your eyes. Don't rub anywhere sensitive. Load it till it's sort of really crammed up to the top. And then we're literally going to grind this down. We're going to pulse this down until you can see that that's become a really, really fine chilli powder. Tap the top and leave it for 30 seconds to a minute to settle. 
don't have any animals near you, certainly don't have your dogs near you, when you're doing a lot of this, I actually tend to wear a mask because as you take the top off, any of that chilli powder, if it goes in your nose, if it goes into your eyes, it will burn. When they talk about pepper spray, what pepper spray is, it's not black pepper, it's chilli and it will literally, if you, you know, get enough of this onto your face, into your orifices, it'll put you in hospital. Wonderful in small amounts for cooking, but it is, you know, dangerous at this point. So the top comes off, and I'll just get a bowl. So this is this amazing chilli powder we get, much tastier, much fruitier than what you'll buy in the shops. If you'd just like to focus on me, I've said before, it's a great thing to wear a nose mask. Sometimes I've even worn goggles. I haven't worn any because I've been recording this. And when you take the top off, the dust is so fine you don't see it. And this is what is happening to me right now. So please take my advice, protect your face, and this won't happen because it is quite stingy and quite painful. Anyway, that's Mark at Learn How to Garden saying I'm now going to go and put my face in a cold bucket of water. But please make your own chilli powder, your own chilli flakes and your own chilli oil. We'll actually be having a separate blog on how to make sweet chilli jam and how to make Rosa Risa. But till next time, that's Mark saying thanks a lot and bye for now.